Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. Last time, in August 2018, I asked you guys a very important question, and that was to show me the mods. But which mods, of course? Your mods. Your janky mods, the ones you're too embarrassed to show on camera, but for some reason you're not too embarrassed to show to me who will show them on camera. Funny how that works. So yes, thanks to over 70 of you, I received some amazingly janky submissions, some more than others, but I, I'm too lazy to show them off just on my own, as I said. So this time, I did the right thing, and I called a couple of friends to come and help me. So before we get started with those, let's meet our team. Hi, I'm Mr. Nathan, and I've been modding for about four years. What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and I've been modding for four years. Hi, I'm Alice Kotak, and I've been serious modding for like three years now. Hello, I'm Syke, and I have been modding for about 10 years. Hello everyone, I'm Bobololo, and sometimes I wear facial hair, and I've been modding for over nine years. What's up, I'm Jangular, and I've been modding, well, I've been doing aesthetic mods like paint jobs and such for probably about four years now, and more recently got into internal modifications, performance mods, and stuff like that. And I'm here to take a look at some of your mods, and I'm excited to dive right on into it. So, show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us the mods. First up is Beat 'em All with their Nerf Cross Bolt. And in their words, this is a Nerf Cross Bolt with bow arms and mechanical locks removed with a modulus stock integration, which is my first and last attempt for the time being. I used two part marine epoxy since it was cheap and the way I integrated it was just using the epoxy like glue so there's no way this shell could come apart now. The length of the stock and the way my cheek rests when I shoulder it is phenomenal since I'm barely 5'8 and the reason why I'm not attaching the string yet is because my first restringing kept damaging the darts. I only tied the string to hook screw screwed where the bow arms were before and it looked like bull horns. Now this is definitely an interesting take on a cross bolt modification. One of the things that a lot of people would run into with the cross bolt is that it is relatively short. So shouldering it is a little bit awkward. So adding that stock integration was definitely a nice choice, I think. This Night Finder is from VanosFan121 and they say this is my first mod attempt. It works, but it's finicky. There are a lot of holes and too long of screws. I managed to make it catch with two springs, but each time you prime it, the priming handle bends and sometimes the plunger head screw gets loose. From the outside, this looks like a perfectly fine Night Finder. And trust me, we've all been there with too long of screws when we get desperate to screw something back together, so don't feel too bad about it. If you want to make the screw fit to the head better, you can put epoxy in there with some grease on the screw to uh, make the threads a bit better, or you can just get a bigger screw to re-carve out the threads, which might help. But overall, this Night Finder looks fine from the outside. Sounds like you have some modding problems going on that we've all encountered, so uh, it's not too bad. From Aaron, I'm 13 years old from the north of Germany. This was my first real Nerf mod. It's called the Raccoon. I'm not proud of it, but it's a first attempt, so the making is pretty obvious. Now that's how you make a pump action Recon Mark II, I guess. Uh, don't just use the Raider pump grip, just use the whole Raider. Yep. If it works, it works. Uh, no, no pride needed here. And that beautiful bar that just goes from the front to the top of the Recon Mark II, oh, aesthetics. Beautiful. Here we have a mod from Eric. This was my first attempt to mod a Nerf Blaster. I drilled out the air restrictor but broke the dart chamber mechanism, so I took off the jam door so you need to reload it manually each time you shoot. The stock and bayonet are mostly held in place with cardboard, duct tape, and popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. Pop. That's cool. That's a nice new modding material. Popsicle sticks. Black light hooligan. For when you only have two blasters and need to take out super zombies. Introducing the abomination. This is just a big shock clipped onto a hammer shot. This was my first integration ever, and looking back at it, I'm wondering why I did it. I think the reason is apparent. All right, well, I think the idea is definitely there. I would probably suggest using some sort of two-part epoxy uh, to adhere the two shells together somehow. Obviously, you need to make it so you can still take apart the blaster. The alignment looks a bit off, but I think it's a good idea. It reminds me a little bit of Awakening, a mod that I did a long time ago. 
uh, which was also a hammer shot master key so there's definitely nothing wrong with that so i think there's a it's a good idea but uh maybe next time use some adhesive okay looking at a blaster here from fishy nerfer no description included uh what appears to be a recon mark ii that has the whole receiver missing along with the handguard one would assume that the uh receiver and magwell and everything has been used for a different project and this is the results or this guy's modding on a level that we don't even understand. This one's by Brian the Brobarian. Bro, bro, bear, bro, barian. Um, this is my first mod of a Nerf gun, AR removed, stock spring, most locks gone, and a janky slam fire only front gun that gets very good ranges for some reason. This one's we're starting off on a high note. Like, the, the paint on the front is, you know, it's not perfect, but you know, I'm really impressed. I don't even know how you made the, the front gun slam fire. Like, unless you're talking about just, like, pulling it back and then just letting it go, but... But I'm I'm impressed. I, I would want to see more of that... that slam fire front gun that gets very good ranges. That's really cool. Nightwing. My first attempt at a minimized Nightfinder. Yeah, I've got one that looks like that, too. No shame here. Uh, gaping front hole and all. Is that barrel even long enough though to fit a dart that seems really short it looks like that just goes straight to the plunger tube so unless you're firing half darts i have some questions with this one creation king it is a regulator with a custom scope and front barrel attachment the things i use for these are a lot of hot glue pvc random nerf gun parts and some nail files well you know, you got to work with what you got, and I think it's an interesting idea. Uh, I'm never a huge fan of adding a lot of barrel to my blasters faux barrel because it just hurts performance, but sometimes people are modding for obviously other reasons besides just improving performance. So uh, I think this is a cool look. I think it's a little rough. You could work with this a little bit and make it into something cool, but I think it's a decent idea and a good start. Next up is Brady who says, what you see is what you get. My local Nerf Wars have a rule. One blaster, one person. So I figured out a loophole and they allowed it, but it's a 50-50% chance that it'll work or the super glue will snap. Previous iterations include clay, hot glue, and duct tape. Now, I like the idea of attaching a holdout blaster to the bottom rail of your strife just in case. You may want to try something like a two-part epoxy or something a little bit stronger than that super glue so that you don't have to worry as much about that blaster coming off in the heat of battle, but definitely a fun idea. Next up is a mod from Mike. This is my rapid pistol attachment. The specs, three fangs revamped on a 2S LiPo cut down to a rapid pistol size, as well as an end strike attachment clamp epoxy putty to the top too. Get this make it capable of being taken on and off a blaster. It's not very durable and it's super cheesy, but in my opinion, it's so bad, it's good. Dude, this mod actually looks pretty well done. Like, it's not as janky as I expected, you know, it's not as janky as I thought. But what is the use of that horizontally placed vertical grip? I don't see a use for it if you are having a rapid pistol. Time loop soup. A present that would have gone to Walcom if I didn't crack the seal and ran out of hot glue sticks. And to be clear, the handle is from an X-Shot scope and still moves. Ooh. <laughs> oh gosh, where do I begin with this? It's honestly killing me that I can't figure out what internals those are. Mm. Love the replacement pump handle though. That's quality. Uh, the whole bare bones blaster is also high quality. This one's by Connor. He says, this is my first Firefly mod. Uh, I call it the Riot Fly. I scooted the light up on top of the blaster to act as a sort of flashbang effect, like the Rainbow Six Blitz, uh, Blitz Shield. I took out the ARs and put a Night Finder spring on, uh, on top of the stock spring, and it worked for about four days and then stopped catching. Mmm. That's such a bad idea, but also I love it. Oh, I'm really in two minds about this because, because the like the the flash the flashbang on the top, it's it's clever and very cool, but 
don't don't just use this in a nerf war like if you're going to use this with your friends make sure that you're like you know make sure nobody has epilepsy or anything because that could end very poorly this one is from taco shadow taco cat a thrifted recon turned into a pump action with other spare parts i've gone from thrifting it's very fun to use so um, I'm trying to figure out what all is happening on this thing. I think that's a popsicle stick glued to the Magwell over the Nerf logo. Um, cardboard tubes abound. Is that a pencil for the Prime? Oh my goodness. This is a really janky mod um, and I hope it works um, and doesn't have too many problems because it looks like it has a lot of problems going on but kudos for your, your, your creativity and getting this put together. So uh, I'll give it an eight out of 10 on that one. Looks good. Okay, Blaster here from Lazy Loser 2600. A Nightfinder shell with secret shot internals featuring a LCD clock with 59 second timer, 15 foot max range at 40 pumps, a four dart holder, a tactical flashlight, mod done in 10 minutes with hot glue. That's got a timer, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I do give the guy credit for the, uh, what appears to be cardboard, is that cardboard on the uh, dart holders? I will give him credit also for the reusing the uh, trigger well on the night finder to actually use the um, secret shot I guess it's a trigger the actual firing pin so to speak uh, that was kind of an added bonus a lot of times when you see those things integrated the button just kind of ends up wherever so that's that's something Ezra this is my first minimized fire strike I took out the AR and put an extra retaliator spring in it maybe it's too good for this I had to take the banana one. I, I had to take the banana one. It might be too good for this, yes, but I, I did get a solid laugh when I first saw this fire strike. Especially how you wrote banana on the side in case, you know, I couldn't tell by looking at this. Oh, it's a banana. Derp. That's a ripe blaster you got there. Following that, we have a mod from Neil. Here's my attempt at modifying an eradicator. The scope was hot glued on from an Air Warriors snipe, and the Recon Mark II stock was hot glued but came off. No internal mod, just paint. Dude, your Recon Mark II stock looks like it's still on. Game off. Alright, submission from Decently Good Nerfer. Okay, that's fair enough. This is my Thermal Hunter mod. It has a Spectre grip, hot glued, and Gorilla taped on. A barricade stock, duct taped to the back, an orange long shot scope on top, a Jolt foregrip. Barrel is a dart zone dart storm barrel and hits around 68 80 F fps i will give you the fact that the aesthetics are pretty good as far as adding the longer barrel onto the uh, thermal hunter which is kind of cool uh replacing the ridiculous busby grip and adding a conventional stock i don't know if the stock itself is just taped on or if he taped on a or affixed a actual um stock point uh, attachment piece um but i i do have to give him extra credit for getting a barricade stock usually it would be a raider I mean, if I was going to gripe on something, I'd say maybe the red tape kind of lashes with the rest of the uh, color scheme. But you know what? Hey, as long as it's functional, that counts for something. Next submission is from Ed. This is the Boom Pup, and Phil Swift would be proud of it. It runs 180s off a 3S LiPo with a flywheel cover flex glued to the shell. It also has an attachment rail glued so that I may mount my favorite attachment ever, the bayonet. And honestly, I see no problems with this build whatsoever. I like the big fat battery door on the Raven, so you can put some bigger batteries in there because we all know the Raven has such tiny space for batteries. Um, the front attachment looks just fine with the Raven, and the bayonet just adds a bit of fun. Um, I think that's the motor cover sticking out from the other side, which, I don't know, I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this Raven. So uh, yeah, looks good, I approve. Pone Kitty. Kitty. Kit. Kit. Hmm, dang it. How many colors is too many colors? This blaster, like the name suggests, is how I found out how many colors is too many for a paint job. Combine that with my first attempt at weathering, and it's absolutely hideous. The blaster itself has an NF Strike spring upgrade, which makes it hard to prime one handed, and it was retired from the job it was supposed to have as soon as it was finished. Um, maybe the weathering isn't amazing? Meh. I do have questions on the yellow cloth wrap. Not sure where that kind of fits into this paint scheme, um, but nothing a new coat of paint can't fix. Or a new hammer shot, I don't know. You pick your poison. Samboy, 1113. I did this mod because I thought lipos were too expensive. I hot glued a battery tray on the side of a strife and connected it through the jam door. Um... 
I'm a little confused here because there's already a battery tray. So why did you add a second one unless you're increasing the voltage by just adding more batteries? But I would have probably gone with IMRs if you don't want to use LiPo. Yeah. Well, at least you're trying. This one was made by Dr. Jex. It was exploded to show all of its wonderment. It has uh, oversized RC motors, upgraded wiring, and a canted flywheel cage. However, it has a stock rev switch and the cage was canted accidentally. The expanded motor cover is made of a uh, mirror acrylic and the aluminum barrel was created as a result of the stock one being lost. So, uh, I'm totally going to give you props for, like, just using what you had around, because that's awesome. That's totally what modding is. You clearly had to modify that cage a lot. I hope it's holding up well for you, because you don't see very many people uh, hand manufacturing, like, flywheel cages and, and modifying them physically. Keith sent us this. It is a night finder with a sledge fire spring because I broke the sledge fire. A half inch CPVC barrel that is hot glued and duct taped to the plunger tube. It gets about 100 FPS, I think. I don't have a chronograph to test it. Definitely a lot of modding potential with the Night Finder. There are tons of things you can do to it, so it's a great platform to start with. And taking springs and using them from blasters that no longer function is a good way to learn what works and what doesn't work. So there's definitely things you can continue to try, like instead of just using a single barrel, you could try a CPVC coupler or barrel CPVC barrel into the coupler so that way you can have multiple barrels and speed load things like that but definitely a good place to start and the more refinement and practice you get the better that performance will be Zargax 24 it's called the blender I was once told by someone it looked like a blender and it stuck it's a dart zone titanium di titanium with a jelly bean jar to extend the hopper capacity to about a hundred, yes. It works fine and I got it done in one afternoon. This makes me so happy to see because it reminds me of the first time that I used my Powerball in a game. Uh, Powerball, Titanium, basically the same blaster too, but I just put a milk carton in the top and called it a day. It was also a really janky hopper. Yours is in the hopper, like the original one. So I feel like this is actually a better idea and it's something that I actually might try on mine. I can revisit the milk carton idea. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. This one is by Quint564. So this is my first uh, try at any form of integration. It looked cool, but normal internal mags have a mechanism to stop the dart from just sliding out the front when you push the primer forward. And I couldn't add that. You can see the liquid nails I filled the gaps in with. Uh, it was fun and great learning experience, but a meh mod in the end. I actually think this is really cool, and I um, I actually have a video where I, I did something similar and then eventually just gave up on it. But it's really awesome that you stuck through and, and did it, and and I hope you have a lot of fun with it because this it looks really fun. Ekron. This fits into a project that went terribly wrong, and this is the final result. I overdrained two lipos with five Neo Rhinos, two stage full auto. Let's not talk about the paint I bought. Just it needs a complete do over. Well, honestly, I don't think the integration looks too bad. It's really hard to tell things like this from a photograph, but it looks reasonably okay. I know I've seen worse, but yeah, the paint job looks a bit sloppy. I would recommend if you're not great with hand painting, I'm not sure, but it looks like this was probably hand painted to maybe go purchase some high quality painter's tape and do it that way. I really get nervous trying to hand paint straight lines especially, so I always usually mask the blaster off and then put another layer of paint on top of that. But using high quality paints is very important and I highly recommend it. Captain Quintana has a Maverick with demolisher integration and they say it's an attempt to recycle an old Maverick and severed rocket launcher from a demolisher. Glued with epoxy and screwed together, it's a nice rocket launcher, though compact. I've seen this type of mod done with Titans uh, back in the old day, the Titan Mavs. I think if you paint this up, it could look really, really awesome. And right now it looks really clean. The cut around the top screw um, of the Maverick, the, the cuts around it are very clean. Everything looks great. I think a little bit of epoxy putty or just liquid epoxy would really make the integration super good. Overall, looks great. Even in its uh, stock paint jobish form, it looks excellent. So good job to you. A slice of Nerf pizza. This is my homemade Jank for Vic. 
I cut a lot, use that word in my last entry, off of the front using a Dremel, which died four times during the making of this. Rip. It's not great, has the Rebelbo Smart AR JB welded on and two springs, but performs a little worse than the stock Vic. But it's much larger too, so yeah. Oh goodness, the uh, jagged cut edges on that hammer shot. Yeah. Always great when you uh, work on something and it yields worse than stock performance. You gotta love it, right? Your time and effort was wonderfully invested. Next up is Anthony with this to say, I would like to show off my first custom mod, which I am calling the Alpha Strike. It's a Busby Rangemaster tank inside of an Alpha Rogue shell. It's held together with a rubber band, zip ties, and a couple of screws. It shoots 100 feet with a reload time of about 3.5 seconds. There's nothing wrong with starting by using the materials you have around you, things like rubber bands, zip ties, screws. If it holds the blaster together and it works, then you've created something. And when you have access to more materials in the future, you can revisit a project and continue to upgrade it or improve it or make it more reliable. It seems like you've got a good foundation to start from by just making sure that the blaster is functional and working and it's performing the way you want it to. Moving on, we have a mod from John. A first attempt, sort of, pump action Apollo. PVC, a garden peg, a few nuts and bolts, a screw, a threaded adapter, super glue, and blue spray paint. When these items are combined, they create this thing. This thing looks pretty, pretty normal. I think the jankiest part is the paint job, I guess. That, I don't know, something about PVC that just, paint just doesn't want to stick to it, you know? But yeah, it looks not bad. Kind of an interesting one here from Chromius. This is Orca. It is the first Rival Strife. It has a 3D printed folding stock. Um, it's a bit difficult to see that given the quality of the picture I received, I'm looking at here, but it appears to be a Strife with Apollo pieces affixed along the top and along the bottom, um, kind of extending the foregrip area, utilizing what appears to be some kind of Picatinny, or is it uh, could just be regular Rival Rail. It appears to be the Apollo grip uh, added for, of course, the Magwell affair everything, which kind of turns into a handguard at the bottom of the grip. Also, the uh, back of the Apollo, which I believe is inverted, it appears on here. Uh, the useless back end of the Apollo that you can't really use as a stock, he has it as kind of like the front of the, the muzzle end, the kind of things that kind of boxes it off. Actually, kind of a cool effect. What appears to be a stock extension for the Retaliator stock, um, apparently is a folding piece, which is uh, kind of an extra bonus as well. I would actually like to see better uh, photos of this and maybe some internal shots too. This is a very interesting build and uh, as far as aesthetically, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I, I would like to, like I said, I'd like to know more. So good job. Andrew, one of my first mods. I had no clue what an AR was, so I just took out the dart post. I thought that that was the AR. Well, now you know. It is a fire strike. Um, at least you do have only one barrel to deal with. I can't really see inside of that, so maybe get a new fire strike. Oh my goodness, what is this? Nerf Jaeger. This is a failed homemade that is just pull back and release blaster. It has no trigger. It's a lot of tape. <laughs> it's a lot of tape. Um, I mean, if if it worked, good job. If it doesn't work, I can see why. I don't have any words for this, this is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'd say burn it. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> wow. Following that, we have Sparky with their Blaster BAS-12. Inspired by the Sledgefire and wanting to utilize 12 gauge shells, I built this monster. It was made to dominate on LARP events and does a fairly good job at punching holes in cardboard and plywood. I wanted it to look dirty and rough, but it turned out to be good enough to now be available on commission. This is definitely something I can see having a bit of a Fallout vibe, uh, kind of a Dystopia Rising event type vibe maybe. Uh, the performance definitely seems like it's uh, not being hindered by the ads and modifications you've done to this. It is in fact a drain blaster, so it's not too surprising, but definitely something cool and interesting for that gritty, grungy ki kind of uh, LARP event vibe and everything that you're going for. 
Dark Magician. This was a first attempt of a heavy shotgun that took way too long to make due to not knowing how to reassemble a Raider. After almost quitting and trimming the prime to get a proper pump, it now works fine. A spring upgrade wouldn't hurt either, but for now, it'll do. All black, basically. Hmm, obligatory, I wouldn't recommend using this for outdoor, but glad you got it to work. Are those half megas? Because I'm looking at the scaling and those look like megas. Half, yeah, half megas, do those fire? If they do, I'm curious. I have a lot of questions, mostly on the darts. Uh, this next one is by Josiah. Uh, this is my first attempt at modifying a Nerf gun. As you can see, it's a Night Finder that has been painted to have better looks. I modified the spring by replacing it with a stronger one and have removed the air restrictor. It's a pretty solid first mod. Um, the paint job looks pretty similar to uh, my first paint job, like quality-wise. Um, definitely not bad. Good, good shot for a first mod. Jay, got two free long strikes. One had the bolt, so I took the one that didn't and made a bolt of wood and put tape around it. Then I took the stock off and taped a handguard onto it. Well, at least you made it function. I would probably not use tape to adhere to blasters and call that an integration or what have you. Probably would use some sort of two-part MMA epoxy and if you don't have that just some sort of other type of epoxy you can get that at any hardware store you can find a plastic bond epoxy at your local Lowe's I'd probably go that route and I'd probably go with a metal bolt instead of wood from Mark a simple air restrictor with a sawed off Maverick handle screwed on and taped onto a Baron handle this actually is more stable and comfortable than you would think I had to talk about this because my primary Baron is also getting a Maverick handle replacement. Who knew? It's just sitting in a bin that I haven't touched in a while. Not sure if I'll use tape for securement like this. Good to see this kind of implemented already. I think I'm going to cut mine a little bit, a little more out of the Maverick handle to integrate it up into the Baron, but I agree with the form factor. Um, I also used a blue Maverick candle because I'm lazy and said, oh look, that blue matches with that blue, enough. Now we have a mod from someone known as BB Destroyer. Triple Barrel Doom. This was my first attempt at upgrading a Nerf Blaster. I made this a couple of years ago and I am honestly surprised that this still is intact. Next up is Ghost Phoenix 1. I don't know what, I'm, what to say about this mutant. Well, it appears to be a Hailfire is that a modulus, original modulus stock with this, uh, the storage stock that has a mag holder on it with what appears to be some kind of uh, dart tag era grip, which looks like it's an actual grip, but it's kind of in the magwell area. But I assume that's storage because then there's a, in front of everything else, there's a rapid strike magwell, which I'm assuming is the functional magwell, uh, along with some other uh, dart tag. I can't tell if that's um, Swarmfire or what those pieces go to. This appears to be a work in progress and uh, he seems to have a good idea of what's going on so far so it'd be kind of interesting to see if this is a work in progress uh, what kind of the final outcome is going to be. So at the very least I say you're off to a good start. Doom Maker. This is my Nerf Sledgehammer Shot. Sledgehammer Shot. It has a Bayonet Tech 3 side holster, oh no, 5 dart ammo holder and a Super Soaker stock. This monstrosity is my first major nerf mod and it is constructed from duct tape. The stock, ammo holder, and holster work pretty well, or work pretty good for how ghetto it is. I know that the Super Soaker stock is somewhat rare, but it's in trashing condition anyways. High quality, a fine use of duct tape right there. Oh my god, that freaking <laughs> bayonet in the front too. Oh god. The real reason this mod achieves such high praise is the thing you mentioned first. The Tech 3 holster. What, what do I say to that? It's genius. Mm -hmm. 